Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to go over exergy analysis of open steady system. Uh, before that, make sure that you have gone over how to analyze an open steady system for mass, energy, and entropy balance equations. We are simply going to add exergy analysis uh, to that problem we solved in, this, in that particular uh, feature video. So what is, where can you find more information about exergy? Exergy is covered in uh, chapter six of your textbook or in, in test throughout. And we, in addition to this analysis we have done in the previous video, we are going to talk about exergy inventory for a particular device. In this specific example, we'll pick a turbine although the same thing can be applied to a whole lot of, whole slew of open steady devices. Devices that are open and which operates at steady state. So we'll start with a few uh, animations. Uh, uh, for example, uh, let's look at the meaning of what is, a f what is flow exergy. Uh, 6A flow exergy animation uh, shows that a flow coming here and uh, it, it has a certain altitude and, uh, you know, when you take advantage of the potential energy, you can extract some useful work. You take advantage of its velocity, you can get extract, you know, the work. You can take advantage of its difference in temperature with the atmosphere and take advantage of that. In other words, you exploit all the differences uh, between the flow and the dead state, the environment, and uh, when the flow comes to equilibrium to the environment. Uh, and... The, the, the maximum amount of useful work you extract from the flow is called the flow exergy, denoted by the symbol psi per unit mass of flow. So capital psi dot here is essentially the amount of useful work that the flow carries. Okay, uh, if, you, if you take a you look at the exergy balance equation, uh, Essentially, what it says, phi is the stored energy in a system, how it can change. The balloon expanding means the stored exergy of the system is increasing. The red boundary represents the open system. So wh what are the reason exergy of a system can change? Because exergy can come in with heat, as shown by this expression. Exergy can come in with a flow, as shown by this gray arrow. Exergy can go out because of a flow, the transport of exergy out by a flow. And, of course, exergy can be delivered as useful work, kind of like elect electricity, for instance. And finally, exergy can be destroyed because of thermodynamic friction uh, within the system and its immediate boundary, immediate surroundings. And that gives us the exergy balance equation. Uh, if it is at steady state, when a system is at steady state, this term goes away because nothing changes with time for the global system. So. For a turbine analysis, for instance, we'll have exergy coming in, exergy going out, and if it's an adiabatic turbine, maybe this will go away. There'll be no exergy exchange with the surroundings or any other reservoirs. And of course, if the turbine is not isentropic, there'll be some exergy destruction through entropy generation and turbine producer. This is our desired output. And in that case, we can find an exergetic efficiency by dividing the desired output with the required input, which is the net input of flow exergy into the system. Okay, so let's go ahead and first, okay, here is the schematic of the turbine showing the exergy inventory. Just what I went over is shown again here. J is the flow energy coming in and psi dot is the flow exergy coming in. Okay, so we launch an appropriate test step, or we, we want to solve a turbine problem as an example of open system. So we follow open system, the generic branch, and come to single flow device. And if we want to continue with our steam turbine example, we should open the phase change model. Again, this is our hands-on examples page. Let's jump to the HTML5 or the test step page. And let's redo recreate the problem we solved before, which is steam coming in at 600 Celsius, 1000 kPa with a mass flow rate of 10 kg per second. 
and exiting the turbine at I believe 5 kPa and 40 degrees Celsius. Of course, the mass flow rate must be the same. And in the device panel, you know, we, we set up the turbine, state one is the inlet, state two is the exit, and it's an adiabatic turbine. We can do a calculate, solve the energy equation to find the external work. So the turbine produces about 11.2 megawatt. Uh, now let's see if we go and uh, in, want to include exergy, we click that button. And you notice that phi and psi appears. Phi is the stored exergy per unit mass, and psi is the flow exergy. It, 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 it essentially is a measure of the difference between the state of the flow and when the state is in equilibrium with or it's at its dead state. So let's find the dead state at 100 kPa. Let's say atmospheric temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So when the flow is at equilibrium with atmosphere, these are its properties. So now that we know the dead state, of course the dead state will have zero exergy. There's no, no useful energy in dead state. And you can see that state one has a ton of flow exergy. So how much money is the flow bringing in? If you multiply psi with m dot one, uh, that means this is the amount of kilowatt that is coming in that can be readily, readily converted without any thermodynamic problem into uh, say electricity, which you can sell. So you go to the device panel. Of course, everything is already calculated. So let's, let's, let's go back again. Suppose there was no exergy, then we will have, this is our work, the external work produced by the turbine. And Q dot is zero in this case. There is only one heat transfer is needed for energy equation. For exergy equation, note that the, the heat transfer is divided into two reservoirs. We allow an external reservoir. Suppose you're heating uh, water, a boiler tube. In that case, you need a TB, the boundary temperature of an ex reservoir would be different than atmospheric temperature. Atmospheric temperature is always picked up from state zero, so you don't have to specify it here, but the temperature of the external source is then specified. In this problem, it doesn't matter because Q dot is zero, so both these terms are zero. Also, Work is divided into useful work and atmospheric work. In a steady system, there is no atmospheric work. So, you know, things simplify. So if you look at all these different new variables, you will notice that uh, the net, you will notice that the net exergy in uh, this term uh, is the net exergy that is flowing into the system is given by psi dot in. And of course, the exergy that is delivered by the system is W dot U. Their ratio is called the exergetic efficiency. So why are they not equal? Why is not 100%? Because some exergy is lost to thermodynamic friction, destroyed by thermodynamic friction. So you'll find that uh, this plus this together will be same as the net exergy that came in, which is also known as reversible work. So I'll leave it there. Chapter 6 has a ton more animations and, and, and in the textbook you can find a lot of information of, on how to uh, use exergy equation to really gain insight into useful work of a device.